Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to find the distance between a point in space and a line. And we're going to do it in two dimensions first to make it easier to see how it's done. So here we have the line, and the line is defined by the equation ax plus by plus c equals zero. And then we have an arbitrary point, point P, defined by x sub naught, y sub naught. Now, if you want to take this equation and put it in a more uh, familiar form, y equals mx plus b, it would be written as y equals minus a over bx minus c over b, such that the slope of the line would be minus a over b. But we simply have it drawn in a general fashion. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the distance between the point to the line, of course that would be a, a, a line that could be defined as perpendicular to the line here, to the point p. To find that distance, we need to find a perpendicular vector. So we're going to define the perpendicular vector n, which is the normal vector to the line. And now you can see that this distance here is the length of the vector, which is the same as the distance there. So the distance from the point to the line is the same as the length of that normal vector. So what we're going to do now is we're going to project the vector drawn from some arbitrary point on the line, let's call it point Q, which is defined as x1, y1, we're going to, which is the start of the normal vector, and then we're going to draw a second vector from this point to our arbitrary point away from the line, and we're going to call that, that vector the line segment QP, but we draw a vector symbol on it because it starts at this point, Q, and then ends at that point, P. Now again, the slope of the line m is defined as negative a over b, which means that the perpendicular to that slope, or the perpendicular to the line, is equal to negative 1 over the slope of the line, which would make that a positive b over a. And since that's defined as the rise over the run, that's defined as the change in y divided by the change in x, which is the slope of our normal vector n. So therefore, we can write the normal vector as being a times i plus b times j, the change in x and the change in y in the, in the x direction and in the y direction. And finally, we can then see that the distance d, this distance here, is the projection of the qp vector onto the normal vector. So d is the projection of the vector qp onto the normal vector n, which we saw in the previous video was defined as the dot product between the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the second vector, the vector on, onto which we're projecting it. So how do we find that? To find the projection of qp onto n, to evaluate this, what we need to do is first define the vector qp. And so the vector qp is going to be defined by the vector pointing from this point to that point. So first let's do that. So vector qp is equal to, in the i direction, it would be the x that we're pointing to minus x where we're coming from. So that would be x sub naught minus x sub 1 in the i direction plus y sub naught minus y sub 1 in the j direction. y sub naught minus y sub 1 in the j direction. All right, so there's vector qp. Now vector n Vector n, as we saw before, is defined as a in the i direction plus uh, j uh, plus b in the j direction. And the magnitude of n can be found. The magnitude of n is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components, which would be a square plus b square. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the dot product so we have d, which is equal to the dot product, which is qp vector dotted with the n vector, divided by the magnitude of the n vector, which is equal to qp, that would be x sub naught minus x sub 1 times the magnitude of the x component of n, plus y sub naught minus y sub 1 times the magnitude of the y component of n, all divided by the square root of a square plus b square. Of course, if one multiply that out, we get the following. So this is equal to uh, a times x sub naught 
minus a times x sub 1 plus b times y sub naught minus b times y sub 1 all divided by the square root of a square plus b square. Probably wondering where is all this going. But now we're going to make one more uh, connection. We're going to take the point Q, which is defined as x1, y1, it can be any point Q on the line, and plug that into our line equation for x and y, which means that a times x1 plus b times x2 plus c must equal 0, which means that c is equal to minus ax1 minus bx2. So here you can see that we have a minus ax1 minus by1, ooh, that's not x2, let's see here, that's I'm using generalized coordinates, I don't want to do that, so start over again, ax1 plus by1 plus c equals 0, so minus ax1 minus by1 is equal to, oop, there it goes again, that's equal to c when we solve this for c, now we can make the connection that a times x1, well, minus ax1, and minus by1, which are these two, two terms right here, those two are equal to c, which means that this is equal to ax0 plus by0 plus c, all divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. And that is the projection of the QP vector onto the end vector, which is equal to the distance between point P, any arbitrary point P and the line, and so therefore this is equal to the distance between that point and the line, and that's how it's defined. Now let's figure out what we have here. Notice that A, B, and C are the coefficients defined by the line. X sub naught, Y sub naught are the coordinates of the point in question. We want to find the distance here. And then the denominator, the square root of a squared plus b squared, again, a and b are defined by the line in that format of the equation. And that's how we find the distance between any arbitrary point and any line in two dimensions defined by that equation. And that's how it's done.